A cardiac monitor is used to measure the heart rate of a patient after surgery. It complies the number of heartbeats after T minutes. When the data when data is in the table are graphed, the slope of the tangent line represents the heart rate in beats per minute. This is our table of values as following. The monitor estimates this value by calculating the slope of a secant line. Use the data to estimate the patient's heart rate. After 42 minutes, using the secant line between the points with the given values of t. So in order for us to solve this problem, we must first know the rise in the run. And we do that by using this equation right here. It says QB, which means beats per minute, minus PB, which is beats per minute, QT, which is time, minus PT, which is time. P is our point P, which is on the graph. And so all these points right here are Q. So we have a Q right here, we have a Q right there, but before that we have this Q right here and a Q up here. And they're going to be touching each other because this is our secant line. And we're trying to estimate, get closer and closer to P. So after that, let's say we're, we're around 40, so let's say 40 is right here. Then we have a secant line really, really close to P. And so what happens is when our secant line gets super close to P, let's say it's 4.1.99999. Point point then it's going to be right here, on like on top of P. And so what happens is that line becomes the tangent line because it converges. And so we get a line that touches P and goes to the same direction as the curve. In this case, it's going this way, and it's going that way. So, all right, so we're going to do this first. We're going to do this example first, where it says t equals 36 and t equals 42. And we're going to do the slope of the secant line right here, which is mpq. And we just plug in the numbers as following. 2,530 2, minus 2,948. Remember what I said, this is our initial point, P. P is right here, so for all the problems that we're going to start with, P is going to be on the right side. And we're su just subtracting against the time of 42 minutes. So we do our subtraction. We end up with negative 418 divided by negative 6. And that gives us an approximation of 69.67 beats per minute. So then we do the same thing with time 38 and time 42. So now we do the slope of the secant line again. Subtract 2,661 minus 2,948. Divide that by 38 minus 42. That gives us negative 287 divided by negative 4. And that gives us 71.75 71 beats per minute. And then we do it again for time 40. In minutes and time of 42 minutes and we do the slope of the secant line again as following 2008 2806 minus 2948 divided by 40 minus 42 and that gives us negative 142 divided by negative 2 and that gives us 71 beats per minute and now we do D and that's T equals 42 and T equals 44 minutes we do the slope of the secant line again from P to Q. And it's going to be 3080 minus 2948 divided by 44 minus 42. That gives us 132 divided by 2. And that gives us about 66 beats per minute. And now, now we finish that. We finish finding all our secant lines for the the points in the graph. So this is one point, like I said, Q, this is another point Q, this is another point Q, this is another point Q. And what we want to do is we want to estimate the heart rate after 42 minutes. So everything behind this isn't 42 minutes. 
we want to figure out what's happening after 42 minutes. And so we could do this two different ways. We could look at all our information and we could say that that the beats per minute are going to be between 66 beats per minute we do an inequality right so it looks something like this 66 less than or equal to x less than or equal to around 70 let's just say 72 beats per minute you can't say something outrageous like 90 beats per minute because you can only go off of what you know and what we know is that it's between 60 and 70 ish we could either do it like that or we could do the average of these two 68.5 so we could either take the average of two secret lines and that gives us our approximation of the tangent line which is the instantaneous velocity or the instantaneous uh, beats per minute in this case because everything else this is all the average beats per minute and so we either could do it like that or we could just say give an inequality so we could say if you we were we had to write this out so we give us a, an estimate and we'll say that the average the instantaneous velocity is around 68.5 beats per minute or we could say that instead we could say that with all the given seeking lines we could estimate that the heart rate is going to be between 66 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 72 beats per minute so make sure you put that and so what are your conclusions well if you're if we were to take a look at the the secant the secant lines right here and their averages, the slope of the secant lines and their averages, we'll find that whoever this person is, they have um, a normal heart rate, a normal resting heart rate. So that's a conclusion we can make. So normal heart rate, and that. That's all we really do need to know about this question. If you like this content, I would appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'll try to do uploads every day. And if you have any ideas of what you want to see in the future, please leave that down below in the comments too. Thank you and goodbye.